Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today we're going back in time to the last days of the Wild Wild West again. Back when men were men, women were basically property, and ragdoll physics made everything super funny. It's Red Dead Red Dead Dead 2. Yes, we did one all about the old games, but now this one's been out for a while, we've got some secrets to tell you all about it. Also, nothing else apart from this uber popular Wild West adventure has ever made me care so much about a virtual beard. God, I look glorious. But how did the game's creators set about improving on the near perfection they produced on the first game? Which male character is actually voiced by a woman? And why am I getting arrested for just bumping into people? They all started it by being in the gosh darned way, the varmints. Unbelievable. Anyway, two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So pull on your cowboy boots, saddle up on your mighty steed, boy, and prepare to gallop thunderously through the dangerously fun period known as the late 19th century, with some spoilers along the way, in 101 facts about Red Dead Red Dead Red Dead Red Dead. Red Dead Dead Red Dead Red Dead Redemption 2. Number 1. Red Dead Redemption 2 is an open world action adventure gunslinging, horse wrangling, corpse desecrating video game created by the geniuses at Rockstar Games. Released for the PS4 and Xbox One in October of 2018, and for Microsoft Windows in November of 2019, the game is the third entry in the Red Dead series and a prequel to the beloved 2010 game Red Dead Redemption. Number 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is set in 1899 in a fictionalised representation of the western, midwestern and southern United States, and follows the story of the rough and tough rogue Arthur Morgan, a member of a band of outlaws led by a charismatic and remarkably well-dressed ne'er-do-well named Dutch van der Linde. After the gang are forced to flee following a botched robbery in the western town of Blackwater, Morgan and his fellow ne'er-do-wells must rob, fight and gunsling in order to survive the decline of the Wild West, with government forces and rival gangs hot on their tails. Number 3. Work on Red Dead Redemption 2 began pretty much as soon as the game's predecessor Red Dead Redemption was released in 2010. By 2011, Rockstar San Diego had produced a broad outline of the game, and in late 2012, rough scripts had been completed. Remember 2012? Back when things weren't all, you know, like this. Good times. Number 4. For production on the game, Rockstar decided that the best way to approach the challenge of creating the expansive and intricately detailed world of Red Dead Redemption 2 would be to share the work across all their studios around the world. As such, Red Dead Redemption 2 constitutes Rockstar's first global collaboration, and didn't they do well? It's a great game, guys. Well done. Number 5. The story in Red Dead Redemption 2 is derived from a script detailing every cutscene, set piece and conversation present in the finished game's main story. As such, the game's script is roughly 2,000 pages long. Number 6. However, according to Dan Hauser, Rockstar's co-founder and one of the game's main writers, if you were to include all the side missions and additional dialogue present in the game and assemble the pages vertically, the stack would be 8 feet high, or just under 2.5 metres for everyone else living in the modern world. Number 7. Indeed, the story of Red Dead Redemption 2 contains roughly 500,000 lines of dialogue. That's a hell of a lot of people in recording booths flapping their gums to make your Wild West adventure as immersive as possible, and believe me, that's a lot harder than it sounds. Number 8. The creators of Red Dead Redemption wanted to make sure that every main character in the game was both interesting and integral to the story, an approach that's evidenced by the intricate relationships and interactions present in the game. As such, a number of extra characters who were deemed not to be adding much to the story were cut fairly early on in the game's development. Get wrecked, unknown characters. Number 9. One of the characters cut from the game would apparently have been very important to Arthur personally. According to Dan Hauser, Arthur was originally going to have two love interests rather than just one. However, the team ultimately decided that Arthur's secondary misses didn't work in the game, and thus she was removed, forever doomed to languish in video game obscurity. Rest in peace, Arthur Morgan's side ho. Rest in peace. Number 10. A number of missions were also cut from the game due to them being technically unworkable or narratively superfluous. These include a mission in which Morgan would fight bounty hunters on a train, which incidentally is exactly how I want to go out. Number 11. The content that was ultimately cut from Red Dead Redemption 2 apparently made up roughly 5 hours of extra gameplay, and its removal reduced the game's playtime from 65 hours down to 60. Number 12. The map in Red Dead Redemption 2 is perhaps unsurprisingly the largest map that Rockstar has ever created, as well as being the most detailed, interactive, and realistic. It's undoubtedly a beautiful game, awash with stunning vistas, verdant forests, and gorgeously constructed period cityscapes, all created just so you can raise hell in style. Number 13. Red Dead Redemption 2 also includes roughly 300,000 different animations, which is unsurprising considering the ludicrous levels of detail present in the finished game. I don't think I even have 300,000 movements in me, and I'm an actual human being. Number 40. As a result of the game's expansive and highly detailed world, Red Dead Redemption 2 takes up an eye-watering 99 gigabytes of space on your PlayStation 4 hard drive, or 107 gig on Xbox One, making it the largest game for either console. Number 15. 
The soundtrack of Red Dead Redemption was composed by Woody Jackson, a well-known American composer, producer, and session musician. Jackson also composed the music for Red Dead Redemption back in 2010, and also contributed to the soundtrack of GTA V, the very first game in the series to have an original score. Number 16. Woody Jackson has stated he tested the music for Red Dead Redemption 2 by obtaining a gun license, buying period guns, and listening to the soundtrack on headphones while firing said period guns at a shooting range. This apparently helped Jackson to assess whether the music he was composing had the feeling he was attempting to evoke. Number 17. Jackson also added some vintage soul to the music of Red Dead Redemption 2 by using instruments used by The Wrecking Crew, a celebrated collective of session musicians known for having worked on several hundred top 40 hits from the 60s and 70s. Number 18. In addition to Jackson's work on Red Dead Redemption 2's instrumental score, Rockstar also brought in a number of well-known musicians to record music for key moments in the game's story. This includes the like of Willie Nelson, Josh Homme, and D'Angelo. Number 19. In all, it took a diverse group of over 110 musicians to produce all the music heard in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now that's a lot of banjo, baby. Number 20. Interestingly enough, one of the people who worked on the game was Laszlo Jones, who many of you will recognise as the long-suffering radio DJ from the Grand Theft Auto series. A surprising number of people, however, are not aware that Jones is in fact a real person with his own thoughts, feelings, and aspirations, who worked on Red Dead Redemption 2 as a writer. Number 21. A number of characters from Red Dead Redemption Numero Uno are featured in Red Dead Redemption Numero Dos, including the first game's protagonist John Marston, his wife Abigail and their son Jack, as well as Dutch Van der Linde, Bill Williamson, Uncle Javier Escuela, and Edgar Ross. However, only four of the voice actors from Red Dead Redemption return for the prequel, specifically Robert Vitoff, who voices John Marston, Benjamin Byron Davis as Dutch, Steve J. Palmer as Bill Williamson, and Tim Bentley as the voice of Edgar Ross. The rest of the returning characters are voiced by a new cast, by High School Musical. Number 22, oh, oh. In Red Dead Redemption 2, Jack Marston is but a lad, and so obviously wouldn't have been voiced by the same actor anyway. However, you may be surprised to learn that in Red Dead Redemption 2, Jack is portrayed by a woman named Marissa Buccianti. While this may seem odd, hiring women to voice children is actually not all that uncommon, as hiring children is often a huge ball ache going to the necessarily strict laws on child employment. Plus, you know, kids cry and stuff. Like, a lot. Number 23. As all of our faithful viewers who've already seen our first video on the Red Dead Redemption series will be aware, Saturday Night Live Alum and Portlandia co-creator Fred Armisen is a huge fan of the series, and expressed his love of the games by lending his voice to a pharmacist in the first Red Dead Redemption game. Awesomely, Armisen returned for the prequel, in which he voices Albridge T. Albington, an MC at the Theatre Rouleur in Saint-Denis. Number 24. Speaking of the Theatre Rouleur, the character of Robin Kaninsky, the renowned singer who regularly performs at said theatre, is voiced by American singer Robin Adele Anderson, a former member of the rotating musical collective Postmodern Jukebox that's widely known for reworking modern songs into different various vintage genres. Number 25. In total, Rockstar employed the talents of roughly 1,200 different actors to bring the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 to life. This involved over 700 performers in speaking roles, including the main cast as well as many others who portrayed various minor characters and members of the general public with whom Arthur Morgan can interact. In addition, numerous other performers in non-speaking roles provided the physical movements of all the random people one can encounter throughout the game. Number 26. Dan Howes has pointed out that as a result of the game's emphasis on detail and sheer number of characters present within it, Rockstar was the largest employer of actors in New York City by miles. Not not by a guy called Miles, but it's in by like a lot. Number 27. Red Dead Redemption 2 represents the work of roughly 2,000 people, which is a lot of people. Just think how good 101 Facts would be if we had that kind of manpower. We'd finally be able to produce my idea for a 101 Facts theme park. <sighs> I guess Snazzy Sam's Fact Land will just be blueprints forever. Number 28. In total, production on Red Dead Redemption 2 lasted for roughly eight years, most of which was spent animating Morgan's glorious beard, I assume. Number 29. While Rockstar have not divulged an official figure of how much it cost to make Red Dead Redemption 2, others have speculated estimates ranging from $170 million all the way up to $240 million. And that's not even considering marketing costs, which could have set Rockstar back as much as $300 million. Either way, it was an excruciatingly expensive game to make and market, and Rockstar will have really needed the game to be a huge success to make the cost worth it. <laughs> Rockstar knew damn well Red Dead Redemption 2 was going to make money. A metric fudge load of money, but we'll get to that later on. Number 30. The British website TrustedReviews.com got itself into a spot of bother in the run-up to the game's launch, by deciding it would be a good idea to publish a confidential document that contained information on a possible Battle Royale mode for Red Dead Online. Not unsurprisingly, Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive, responded by suing Trusted Reviews, eventually settling for a million dollar donation to three separate charities. Number 31. 
In all the excitement over the release of Red Dead Redemption 2 and the following weeks and months of eager gamers playing through the game, you may have forgotten that Arthur's Jolly Jaunt in the Dying Wild West was delayed not once but twice. The release of Red Dead Redemption 2 was originally set for autumn or the fall of 2017, which was later pushed back to the spring of 2018 after Rockstar decided they needed more time on the game. This then happened again with another delay to the release date, which was ultimately pushed back to October of 2018. Number 32. Shortly before the game's release, Hauser got himself in a little bit of hot water after he praised Star for working 100 hour weeks in order to get Red Dead Redemption 2 finished, prompting accusations that Rockstar employees had been overworked. In response, Hauser claims he was only referring to members of senior writing staff, and that these periods of intense work constituted only several weeks throughout the entirety of the game's development. Number 33. However, Hauser's clarification did not satisfy everyone at Rockstar, with some workers claiming that the discussion was giving an inaccurate depiction of the so-called crunch culture present within the company. Rockstar employees all over the world, although particularly those working at Rockstar Lincoln in the UK, complained of low wages, long hours and overtly strict security measures. Following considerable public criticism of Rockstar as a result of these revelations, the company instituted various changes that have reportedly improved work conditions. Number 34. Before Red Dead Redemption 2 was released, the game was advertised with a series of meticulously crafted teasers and trailers. These sneak peeks were made with such extreme care that according to Dan Hauser, each and every one of them went through around 70 drafts before they were made public. Number 35. In the days before the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2 on the 26th of October, fans of the series were increasingly vocal in their anticipation for the game's release. Indeed, according to Consumer Trends and Insights firm Crimson Hexagon, eager gamers had collectively made around 1.13 million posts about Red Dead Redemption 2 on social media during this period. That's a hell of a lot of chatter. Number 36. Not only that, the company also stated that these posts were 76% positive, indicating that people generally believed that Red Dead Redemption 2 was going to be awesome. They've got good heads on their shoulders, those Red Dead fans. Number 37. Some have speculated that Arthur is likely of Welsh ancestry, given that both his first and second name are Welsh in origin. Despite the fact that Arthur is completely Americanized, his inclusion in Red Dead Redemption 2 as the game's main character likely constitutes far better Welsh representation than was present in Red Dead Redemption, which I hasten to remind you included a delightful Welshman called Welsh, who you murder almost immediately after meeting. Number 38. Not only is his name a likely indicator of his Welsh heritage, Arthur also named a former horse of his Bodicea, after the rebellious queen of the Celtic Iceni tribe, who famously battled against the invading Romans. Bodicea laid waste to a number of Roman settlements before the Italian invaders finally got their shiz together and fought back, at which point she committed suicide by drinking poison. Your poison. Number 39. Rob Vierhoff, the American actor who voices John Marston in all the Red Dead Redemption games, has stated that Arthur is his favourite character in the Red Dead series, but here's what I want to know, do you agree with that? Is Arthur the best character in the games? Or is there another character who deserves more credit, like Bigfoot in the first one? Let us know in our snazzy YouTube poll. Number 40. Many people have pointed out that Dutch Vanderlyn's clothing and facial features bear a striking resemblance to that of Ian McShane's character Al Swearingen in the popular HBO Western TV series Deadwood. Is this an affectionate reference to the show? For the sake of this fact, sure. Yeah, why not? Number 41. One of the game's most noted qualities is its stunning attention to detail. Within the context of a reasonably playable and enjoyable video game, Rockstar endeavoured to make the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 as realistic as possible, which can be seen in all aspects of the game. When interacting with people in the great wide world of Red Dead Redemption, Arthur has the option to greet or antagonise those around him, including his fellow gang members. Most of the time, if the player decides to aggravate people in the camp, they will try to be the bigger person and walk away. But if Arthur keeps up with his mean streak, those around you may intervene or even take a swing. At you. The meaning of life. Realistic social interactions are not limited only to those whom Arthur knows well. The sense of social decorum is so realistic in Red Dead Redemption 2 that even rushing through urban areas like towns and cities will elicit stares and warnings from passers-by. You can even get into trouble with the fuss just for bumping into people or knocking them over. So best keep it to a leisurely stroll unless you fancy getting yourself nicked. Number 43. Similarly, if you run full speed at a door, Arthur will charge into it with his shoulder and bust it open. If you do this when entering a public building, everyone inside will be startled and react with a delightful old-timey exclamation or two. You might even make them swear. What a lark. Number 44. If you end up in physical altercations with shopkeepers in the game, because who doesn't enjoy a little scrap at a local newsagent, they will remember you and treat you with the caution you deserve. Number 45. Not only that, if you've roughed up a person badly enough, they may also display evidence of the injuries you afflicted upon them, in the form of black eyes, for example, or bandaged heads. The reason I'm telling you this is because I genuinely didn't realise this when I first played it either, so this is news to me. Number 46. 
On the frequent occasion that Arthur gets himself covered in blood, either by killing an animal or picking it up, or being shot in a good old-fashioned manly gunfight, said blood will linger on Arthur's clothes until he takes a bath or goes for a dip in a river. Indeed, if you stow a slaughtered animal on the back of your horse, which I'm sure definitely isn't a massively traumatizing experience for your steed, the blood will also stay on him or her as well. Number 47. Not only that, when Arthur is covered in mud or blood, the reactions of those around him will be different compared to when he's clean. Just like in real life when I rock up to places covered in blood and caked in muck and grime, this game really gets me. Number 48. Indeed, if players don't have Arthur spend some time in the bath every once in a while, he actually will start to smell, which will elicit comments from those around you who are being subjected to your rank stank. Take a bath, you filth pot. Number 49. Not only will your righteous B.O. earn you undue attention from your fellow man, entering Eagle Eye will also reveal Arthur's scent. Naturally, this can be detected by nearby animals, so if you're out hunting, be aware that your stench may spook your prey. Number 50. If you think I'm overstating the extraordinary degree of detail present in Red Dead Redemption 2, you're wrong, 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 is he wrong. In possibly the most extreme example of the game's intricate world building, Arthur actually gets dirt under his fingernails. Number 51. As players of Red Dead Redemption 2 will know, Arthur's beard grows at a steady rate relative to the progression of the time in-game, meaning you can't just head down to the barbers and magic up a full mountain man beard or a biker stash like you can in other inferior games. No, you actually have to wait until your beard comes in and style it accordingly. You may also be aware that you can speed up your follicular production with the aid of hair tonic. But if you really want to get nice and hairy pronto, all you have to do is take a few long distance stagecoach trips and you'll be one fuzzy fella in no time at all. Number 52. It's worth noting too that even Arthur's beard has its own physics, as it can be seen shaking and shifting around as he moves, depending on how much weight it has. Number 53. Arthur has multiple different ways of getting on his horse, depending on a variety of precise factors such as the angle and speed of his gruff, manly approach. He even has specific animations for getting on his horse when it's standing on a steep incline. Number 54. While lesser games would simply vanish the remains of dead humans and animals, players of Red Dead Redemption 2 may notice that corpses will slowly decompose at the passage of time, until the unfortunate person or creature is little more than bones. Number 55. Indeed, while in other games, dead bodies will simply disappear after a period of time, especially if you walk a certain distance away, in Red Dead Redemption 2, if you wait long enough, police will actually arrive to pick up human corpses and then take them away. Number 56. If you shoot the bottom of canoes and rowboats, they will begin taking on water and eventually sink. Just like in real... Number 57. Red Dead Redemption 2 is so committed to its meticulously realistic slow burn gameplay that observant players will even notice that houses and train tracks are gradually built over time. Players who stop to take in their surroundings may encounter people working on new buildings and upon returning to those locations later on, will see finished structures rather than just wooden frames. In a way, this is a visual expression of the game's theme of decline in the Wild West, as urbanization spreads throughout the last vestiges of the untamed expanses of North America. Number 58. Not only will people build things for themselves, if Arthur damages a wall or any other structure, as he's one to do, the little scamp, you can actually return to see it being repaired and eventually fixed completely as time progresses. Number 59. Of course, the game's commitment to authenticity also extends to the weather, a common feature seen in many other modern open world games. What other titles may lack is the realistic effect of turbulent skies. On occasion, thunderstorms will also produce actual lightning that will sometimes strike trees and vegetation, causing them to burst into flames. Number 60. If you think that trees are the only ones at risk of getting got by lightning strikes, you are sorely mistaken. While by its very nature obviously rare, if Arthur is out and about during stormy weather, he may end up getting hit by a bolt of lightning, which can kill you instantly if it hits you directly. Number 61. Adorably, your horse might also become visibly agitated during stormy weather. Okay, boy. Nothing to be scared of. Just naturally occur an electrostatic discharge. I've said it before, but I am available for voice work. Number 62. Oh, and just FYI, the moon in Red Dead Redemption 2 follows accurate lunar cycles. Yep, they even got the moon right. Brings a tear to my eye. Number 63. One of the best ways to get rid of a body in Red Dead Redemption 2 is by throwing your unlucky victim into a pig pen and letting the porkers do the rest, by which I mean they'll happily munch away on a corpse until there's nothing left. They will leave no trace of your crime, save for your own traumatic memory of watching a group of pigs tear off pieces of a human being's face. Nintendo 64. Your, 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 your. If you're frustrated by the annoying horse riding mechanic that has you either trotting along slowly or galloping at breakneck speed using up all your horse's precious stamina, no! exclaiming, there has to be another way. Well, lucky you, there is. 
If you tap the gallop button in time with the horse's hooves hitting the ground, you'll fall into a nice easy rhythm that will keep you at a steady pace without draining your energy too quickly. Number 65. Red Dead Redemption 2 features well over 50 weapons, most of which are also super customizable both in terms of added components and decoration. This allows players to really put their own personal stamp on all the crimes and brutal killings that you'll be doing. Number 66. Almost every member of the Dutch Vanderlind gang has their very own personalized sidearm, and several of them even have custom long arms too, including John and Sadie. Number 67. Unlike other recent Rockstar titles, players endowed with sufficient firepower can blow the limbs off their enemies clean off. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I can do that, and I don't have to explain to you why. Number 68. Pretty much all of the gameplay components featured in the first Red Dead Redemption game were massively expanded upon in the prequel, and the presence of the world's animal inhabitants was no exception to that. Red Dead Redemption 2 contains roughly 200 subspecies of animals, all of which behave and respond to their environment and Arthur's actions in completely unique ways. These include horses, dogs, cats, fish, eagles, vultures, foxes, alligators, grizzly bears, lizards, coyotes, possums, and deer. Number 69, boy. Turn myself on there. One of the most well-known and weirdly accurate animal details concerns the game's all-important horses, which players may already know are <clears throat> anatomically correct. In pursuit of the game's insane attention to detail, curious players can also observe that entering colder regions of the map will cause the undercarriage of their male horses to visibly shrink due to the drop in temperature, which actually is a real phenomenon that more people should bear in mind, like, in general, and also be aware that it's cold a lot in England. I won't go into it. Number 70. One animal featured in the game is the opossum, a delightful little critter that our more zoologically minded viewers will know is a hardy marsupial endemic to the Americas. A lovely little detail added to the opossum is noticeable upon approaching them, at which point these creatures will play dead, a famous trait seen in the real McCoy. Opossum representation is important, you guys. Number 71. Hunting takes up much more of a significant place in the gameplay of Red Dead Redemption 2 than in its predecessor. Indeed, the game's insistence on detail means that Arthur is not the only threat to animal kind, as various different species will also hunt one another as is the way of all life. Take a second to behold the game's beautiful natural landscapes and you may be lucky enough to watch a cougar take down a deer, or see a grizzly bear face off against a pack of wolves. Crows and other scavengers will even feast on decomposing corpses left out in the open. The circle of life, Simba. Number 72. The state of Lemoyne is based on the real US state of Louisiana, evidenced by the fact that when Arthur is in this area, the ambient music will change to a more distinct Southern Creole style, reminiscent of the musical traditions that are native to Louisiana. Number 73. The feud between the Braithwaites and the Greys is somewhat reminiscent of the famous feud that raged throughout the mid-19th century between the prominent Jones and Little families from Catahoula Parish, Louisiana, the US state on which Lemoyne is based. The origins of the Jones Little feud, also known as the Black River War, aren't definitively known, but the conflict spanned 23 years and cost the lives of six people, although some estimates put that figure as high as 18. Number 74. The city of Saint-Denis is based on the real-world city of New Orleans, sharing a number of similarities with the home of jazz music and Mardi Gras. Many of the buildings in Saint-Denis are almost exact copies of real New Orleans houses, while the city's square looks remarkably similar to Jackson Square, a historic park in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Number 75. The name Saint-Denis is a reference to the 3rd century Christian martyr of the same name, who serves as the patron saint of the French capital of Paris. Saint-Denis was beheaded, a grisly detail that's reflected in most of his depictions, including in the Saint-Denis city seal. Number 76. Saint-Denis features a gallows at a location known as Guiteau Square, where hangings are carried out in the city. The name is likely a reference to Charles Guiteau, who was hanged in 1882 for the assassination of President James Garfield. Number 77. Saint-Denis was originally going to be named New Bordeaux, but it was changed during the game's development upon the realisation that the name had already been used in the 2016 action-adventure game Mafia 3. The original name of New Bordeaux can be seen in a Red Dead Redemption 2 map that leaked in 2016. Number 78. Another nod to New Orleans concerns the street names in Saint-Denis. Instead of being displayed on signposts or attached to the walls on street corners like the good lord intended, the street signs in Saint-Denis are actually written on the sidewalks, with blue lettering on white tiles just like in New Orleans. Number 79. If players direct Arthur to gaze into a mirror, the gruff protagonist will comment on his appearance. Upon seeing his gnarled and weather-beaten yet ruggedly masculine visage, Arthur will invariably respond with self-deprecating insults. Guy really needs to listen to some Lizzo. Number 80. When required, Dutch goes by the alias of Aidan O'Malley, which is a sneaky little ref to a character of the same name in GTA 4, who you have to... I won't spoil it for you in case you haven't played GTA 4, but let's just say things don't end particularly well for Mr. O'Malley. I hate you, spoiler! Number 81. 
If you journey to the area of Shoreline, just south of Flatneck Station, you will find a corpse lying next to an upturned boat. If you attempt to loot the guy, Arthur will be shocked to discover that said corpse is barely still alive. The unfortunate soul will then hand you back a letter and say, Tell her I never stopped before slumping down into a motionless heap. In the letter, the writer states he will turn to the letter's intended recipient as a rich man and a fine husband and father. And to whom is that letter addressed? Bonnie McFarlane, the woman who rescues John Marston in the first Red Dead Redemption. Number 82. Out and about in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, players may come across a series of children's books featured a famed gunfighter called Landon Ricketts, a major character from the first Red Dead Redemption game, which details his encounter with the gunslinger Jim Boy Calloway, who's attempting to infiltrate a Mexican army fort. Number 83. In the books, Ricketts puts a witty aphorism to Calloway, saying keep jumping from one side of the fence to the other and you might get impaled on it. This is the very same line that Ricketts says to John Marston in the Red Dead Redemption mission entitled The Mexican Wagon Train. Number 84. There are five locations in Saint Denis where Arthur can read the weird emo poetry that someone keeps scrolling onto the walls throughout the city. Find them all and they will reveal a location on the map to you just south of Saint Denis Cathedral that's ominously labelled Corpse. If you head to this location between midnight and 1am, you will encounter what appears to be a vampire sucking blood from a deceased victim, who will attack you with a knife if you don't heed his orders to leave. Be warned though, the vampire can kill you with a single strike. Number 85. The vampire bears a chilling appearance, with pale skin, pointed ears, long fingers with pointed nails, and an unsettling pair of fangs. The vampire's features are clearly based on those of Count Orlok, the principal antagonist of the iconic 1922 silent film Nosferatu. Number 86. If you do manage to subdue and hogtie the vampire without killing him, you might want to consider taking the bloodsucking fiend out to the tiny church just north of Saint Denis, where if you place the vampire before the crucifix, he will die instantly. Yeah, take that, you spooky little vampire Easter egg. Number 87. In the mission The New South, Dutch mentions that his mother is buried in Blackwater. If you fancy it, you can actually head to Blackwater Chapel and find the grave of Greta van der Lind. I mean, I for one love visiting the graves of my friend's dead parents in real life, so I'm just glad I get to do it in video games too. Number 88. There's a location between Dead Boot Creek and Spider Gorge where Arthur can find the bones of a large tusked mammal, prompting to Arthur to write in his journal, Was this a mammoth? The weird thing is that the mammoth went extinct around 4,000 years ago, yet the skeleton is just sitting on the ground like it died mere months before. Hmm. Number 89. Speaking of skeletons, there's a location on Mount Shan, north of Strawberry, where Arthur can find an enormous humanoid skeleton. If you have a closer look, you'll also see that there's a huge spiked club lying next to the skull, suggesting that the remains may have belonged to a massive YouTuber who made replica medieval weapons. Number 90. There's a particular spot in Lemoyne, roughly the top of the O in the word Lemoyne on the map, where Arthur can encounter the limp body of a massive snake dangling from a tree. Many have speculated this could be a reference to Car, the huge and powerful nope rope from the Jungle Book. Number 91. Similar to GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption 2 also comes with a companion app, which has generally been reviewed well as a genuinely helpful addition to gameplay. The app allows you to look through your journal, browse missions, and can show you Arthur's location in real time without the need to pause the game. Number 92. Just like pretty much everything else that Rockstar makes, upon release, Red Dead Redemption 2 was met with universal critical acclaim, because of course it was, it's amazing. Reviewers of the game praised its narrative, characters, gameplay, open world design, and its much mentioned attention to detail, while Games Radar's David Mickleham stated that it represents the current pinnacle of video game design, and to be fair, not wrong is he? Number 93. Red Dead Redemption 2 bagged itself 10 out of 10 ratings from numerous gaming media outlets, including Edge Magazine, Game Informer, and IGN, the latter of which declared the game as a masterpiece. Similarly, the game also received 5 star ratings from EGM, Games Radar, and Giant Bomb. Number 94. At the time of making this video, Metacritic ranks Red Dead Redemption 2 as the joint 5th highest rated game ever. Like, of all time, of any game ever made. Just saying. Number 95. Red Dead Redemption 2 was also declared Game of the Year by numerous gaming publications, including but not limited to Edge Magazine, Game Reactor, GameSpot, The Telegraph, US Gamer, and Vulture. Number 96. Of course, glowing reviews mean nothing if the game isn't selling and making a crapload of delicious money. Not that there was ever any chance of the sequel to Red Dead Redemption not shifting some serious units. Indeed, the game is among the best-selling video games of all time, with over 26.5 million copies shipped as of November 2019. Number 97. 17 million of those copies were shipped during the first two weeks of the game's release, meaning that Red Dead Redemption 2 exceeded the lifetime sales of its predecessor, Red Dead Redemption, in a fortnight. Not that fortnight. Number 98. Incidentally, Red Dead Redemption 2 was also the most pre-ordered PlayStation 4 game ever. Yeah, not much else to say about that. Gotta fill some time. Uh, hmm. Jennifer Lawrence, she's nice, isn't she? Number 99. 
Red Dead Redemption 2 also has the largest opening weekend of any game in the history of entertainment. Not just gaming, entertainment media in general. Having raked in $725 million in its first three days, only GTA V had a bigger launch, given that it made a truly staggering $1 billion in its first three days. The only caveat is that GTA V was released on a Tuesday, meaning it doesn't get that juicy opening weekend accolade. Number 100. Red Dead Redemption 2 is affectionately known by fans as Rootin' Tootin' Cowboy Shootin' 2, after the previous game ended up with similar nicknames. In fact, it should have just been called that from the outset, because it's a better title, isn't it? Number 101. The sixth episode of the 22nd season of South Park, entitled Time to Get Serial, contains numerous references to Red Dead Redemption 2, as several characters play the game during a crisis involving Al Gore's man Bear Pig. You know you made it when you're in South Park, baby. So that right there was 101 facts, all about Red Dead Redemption 2. What do you think though, is Red Dead Redemption 2 one of the best games you've ever played? Would you want to see a Red Dead Redemption 3 and what the heck would that be about? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to all time- No, subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already. Over 480,000 people can't be wrong. No, they can't. I'm not accepting that they can. Hey, in the meantime though, look! Two videos on screen that are really gonna wet your whistle. Why not click on one and I'll see you there. Bye bye. Bones, 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 b